Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Hypermine FTB Infinity Evolved server. How's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. I want to take a little bit of time and say thank you for taking a little bit of your time and sharing it with me this afternoon. Hopefully, by the end of today, you are at least entertained, but hopefully inspired for your own builds. But let's get out of F5 mode and just come around here like so. Put our armor back on. Cause that's a little less imposing like that let's take a look that look at that that's that's a little much it's i'm a lot more approachable i think if i don't have that stuff on what do you think let me know anyway let's get out of f5 so you can see we've got a little bit of progress to show off and got a little project in mind today in fact we're going to be getting started on that's right the spawner room finally the main project for this whole castle base we're getting started on it today folks so get ready anyway lots of progress to show off let's come through here i'm going to fly over because we don't have a fast way of getting through that water there's no depth strider boots that'd be nice but anyway you can see that we've got a little bit of a change up top there on the castle keep you can see that skystone brick is now covering the yeah, complete top, which means that we have completely converted all of the cobblestone in the walls here and in the castle keep to a sky stone. That means that bee has been going really well. The other thing of note is that you can see some spruce logs making an appearance here, kind of decorating, and we're getting that worked out. I'm going to show you a little bit more of those details just as soon as we go around this corner because got a lot of stuff to show you I've been doing been uh, doing a fair amount uh, off camera not showing it with you so we're going to see a bunch so last time I showed you this building right here and that's where our ME system is or or was going to be and so I needed to move that off camera and so we can come around here and we're just gonna ignore the elephant in the room beside me for the moment you see that the ME system is gone it used to occupy a position somewhere right around here, and it is, it's gone. Where did it go? Yeah, and you can see some other changes. Ooh, lag spike. Let's come over here. We'll get to these buildings in just a moment, but let's take a look at the ME system real quick. We're gonna come in here. You can see that we've got uh, just a few of the drives put in so I did put those in that was where we were originally storing everything outside and now I've put them in here and put all the terminals in place we've got crafting terminal and I'll show you that in a bit and our fluid terminal we've got some sewage how are we getting sewage that's interesting to me I'll have to figure that one out Hmm, that means we got a sewer somewhere close to some animals. So I that's a surprise to me. Anyway, we also have a pattern terminal. And we should have that already in the system. And an interface terminal so we can access any interface that happens to be on our ME network. And we've got what looks to be quite a few in here. And you can see that I have been putting in some patterns let's take a look back here now I can't remember if I showed you how far we've gotten back here I did have the crafting cube in place if you want to know about the crafting cube again I will put a link to Ballantine's video in the description box below but he goes into uh, a pretty good explanation of how this all works and so there we go that's a little crafting cube we've got interfaces and molecular assemblers here like so and then on the same channel setup with this dense ME conduit from Ender IO I've got a few different crafting processors we've got one that has uh, let's see 64k 64k and then a, a crafting monitor I don't I never get back here in time to see what's being crafted but maybe if I get to something that's taking a long time like some uh, solar panels or something then we'll actually see that in use I've also got some 1k storage right here uh, so four processors total for crafting that that makes things rather quick 
then up here, I found that my bees weren't quite producing after I moved to them. And, or rather, they weren't, they weren't getting centrifuged correctly, so they all kept getting into the ME system. So this is just a temporary setup to take care of all the combs that showed up in the ME system. Up here we've got our import and export. So export for Eulorium, which we've got plenty of in the system. Import from our standard ender chest and export for, what is that, uh, mob essence. So there we go. This entire system is held in this particular building, which I showed off last time. You remember the overall design we're going for. Uh, the only thing I've changed here is a torch. So that's from the chisel mod. And that's just one of the models that you can get for a regular torch. So there we go. One thing that I found out is that I had put this building too close to the keep for when we start doing the decorating on the keep. So we're just going to have to live with it and work around it once the full decoration on the keep goes in. And that's kind of how castle towns worked anyway. They kind of just got built up. And sometimes you have buildings touching that you wouldn't necessarily want to, to be touching. So we'll just deal with it. Um, I did find out in enough time that we were too close to the keep for this building. So um, I moved this building out a couple that way. So, so yeah, we'll get to that building in just a moment. And over here, I'm going to show you a little bit more that we've done. Uh, no, 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 not, not yet. Right here, is going to be the reactor so i moved that over slightly so that we could have a, a more believable path through here between the me building and the reactor building and this is going to be a one if you ever look at a stereotypical reactor containment building it's going to be like that it's going to have a dome on the on the top for the roof so we're going to have a medieval themed reactor containment building if that makes sense so we'll see if we can pull that off. It's a it's a weird juxtaposition of ideas, modern and and old at the same time. So we'll see if we can pull it off. But uh, but there we go. That I'm still working on that. And then we've got that building as well. But in moving the reactor, I needed to move the B processing. So let's take a look at that over here. Let's go down this elevator block like so. Behind me, you can see the deep storage units. Not all of them are hooked up because we haven't figured out what we should be hooking up. And all of that comes through a, an ME conduit. Just grab a wrench here so you can see. So that's conduit facade right there. When you hold a wrench, it shows the conduit behind there. And you can see it right there as well. Some more conduit facade going on. But that's all 32 channels filled up for that conduit. So we're kind of stuck there. If we want some more st uh, deep storage over here, it'll have to go on another another ME conduit. So anyway, down here we're going to have our automated machines that are hooked into the ME system. So with the processing patterns and such. But I did move the bees over here. And the way to move bees, uh, let me show you a little something else that I've got here. Or move the factory manager Let's see if I can get it here yeah so there's this manager duplicator it's like a disk and you just right click on a one of these um, no not that on the manager itself the Steve's factory manager you can right click on it it stores your entire flowchart on that disk so you can right click it later so it was a way to to move that factory manager around so, so yeah, and I made it a little more compact. We did have the factory manager block visible up here, but I just put it under the diamond chest. So I did have to change some things. The inventories weren't quite set up correctly. So there we go. And then I moved my RF tool stuff to over here, and we'll get to that at a later point. For now, we need to get the various processings done. And let's take a look at this other building right here. And this is just for a future episode, but this is going to be our ore processing uh, facility. Okay, so step back and take a look at it. 
uh, it's kind of our smithy so I did base it off of some uh, what, are, what are they medieval smithies that I saw online I just did a Google image search and found something that looked like this so I tried to recreate it as best as I could seems a little awkward but it does get two different roof lines so we're gonna keep it we've got kind of the same same theme going on as the Emmy system building over there if you've got some a better name for that building over there the crafting and storage facility I guess but I don't know if there's a good name for it in a castle town right here it's the blacksmith so the blacksmith we're gonna have ore processing we've got our tinker smeltery there come in here there's not much at the moment we're gonna be doing that in a future episode maybe the next one maybe not I don't know we'll see so we got plenty of room for the various machines that we need for that so now what we need to do is start work on the spawner room so let me show you what we've got for that and I really need to walk around the castle town instead of flying around so over here is going to be our spawner room we've are, I've already laid out how these spawners are going to be arranged and each of these chiseled cobblestone bl blocks brick block whatever is going to be a spawner we may not fill up all 16 the reason I'm doing 16 is because there are 16 colors on uh, redstone conduit for from ender IO so we're going to be controlling these with redstone conduit so we can turn them on and off as we wish. That's one of the things you can do with the Draconic Evolution uh, auto spawner or uh, stabilized spawner. But let's take a look at what we've got for the, uh, the harvesting chamber, if you will. So I was going to do, you can see over here, I was going to be doing um, a, a harvester. What are they? The, the mob harvester? I was going to do that. And then I decided, you know what, that takes... RF and we're already using spawners that don't take RF we might as well use a harvesting mechanism that doesn't take RF so we're going to be using these diamond spikes and we're going to be putting Reaper 5 and looting 3 on them why do we want Reaper 5 well we want to get some more of the mob soul drops from Draconic Evolution so we can respawn dragons if we wish and looting 3 so that we can to get one of those okay so that we can get the uh, really really good drops the good player drops the rare player drops more frequently so let me grab we're gonna grab some levels here so I can show you how I'm going about this it's gonna require a lot of off-camera work uh, why is that well you'll see I'm I am gonna fly over here we're gonna fly to the original hidey hole because I've got something down here and I can't remember if I've shown you this, but I have been using the Bibliocraft printing press to copy books. So what we can do here is eat first. And um, right here, there's no interface. So the way to use an interface, or there there is an interface, but it's not, you don't right click to get to it. You have to use these glasses. So let's do that. And once you put on those glasses in your helmet slot, you can see different things show up on various bibliocraft items. So over here, you can see how many books are left. There's 40 books and then 40 ink. So we're not doing too badly there. And then you can see the book that I have put on top of the printing press and how many levels it's going to take to copy the book. So we take an empty hand. We've got Reaper 5 looting 3 in there. I'm just going to shift right click and that gives us a printing or an enchanted plate. We put that in here and there we go. That thing's going to start doing its duplication. And you get three duplications out of one of those plates. And it takes a while. So we'll take that, put that back on there, ready for the next time. So that's how I've been duplicating those. We'll take the glasses off actually let's put that down here so that we can just put it on there also you may have seen me do this I put in a wireless terminal so that I can send stuff back to the ME system or grab stuff from the ME system as I see fit so there we go uh, we're gonna have to do this 25 times to get all of those books 
I am not going to bring you along for all of that. I'm just going to take care of this and uh, and then we'll enchant these. But let me show you the enchantment. Ooh, come on, come on. Let's get through there. Get away from the chickens. They're so loud. Get away from there. Another thing I've done right here, I set up a little auto essence berry farm as well. And we'll move that to a more proper spot and put that with the other... Um, like the ore berries and, and such. So let's come here. We'll put a diamond spike in and it's going to take 26 levels. And I do have some levels just sitting over here from when I had this down in the basement section on those spawners. So let's throw that spike back in there. And there we go. We've got one of the spikes. So let me get all of those spikes done and then we will go in and lay them out on the uh, floor in there and we'll get that going. All right, so I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm heading away from my island because I need to get a test subject for our little spawner collection area. So we've got a, what, a zombie there. Um, I've, I had to go away from the island because I've got all those magnum torches and nothing will spawn over there. So let's see if we can grab that zombie yeah, there we go. We got them in a soul vial. This is from Ender.io. And you usually use those to set up those powered spawners from Ender.io. But this one, we're just going to let him loose after we do a little bit extra of, of what we've got here. All right, so a, a little bit of a change from what I was originally planning. So all of these spawners are going to be in a column above this central spike. I ran out of levels. So I figured, you know what, we may be able to get by without that central spike. And sure enough, in my creative testing world, I was able to do that. So I've put a sewer in the center and we're going to put just a block right above it and keep any mobs from dropping in there. And then what we're going to do, I was thinking a vacuum hopper, but instead I found this vacuum chest from Ender.io. I'm just going to put that right there and then we'll go back we'll go down here and I've already got a little bit of a setup going and we can take that block out and we'll put uh, add one oh it's up top I forgot to get it out of the chest so let's just grab this real quick and there we go got our item item transfer node let's go down here there we go all right item transfer node I'm going to put that on the bottom of the vacuum vacuum chest and we'll see if this thing works. So I've got the sewer with a liquid transfer node. Both going both of those are going into the test rack there so we should see uh, something go. Let's see. Let's Okay. There we go. So the vacuum chest did sucked that zombie flesh up and the sewer sucked up the uh yeah there we go sucked up all the mob essence and there we should be good to go all right so i did add the iron mfr upgrade to make sure it would cover the full five by five area so uh, that wasn't a proper test because i have it going into the test rack already but we've got uh, got a decent amount of mob essence in here and we're going to be using that for some MFR auto spawners in particular for the ghast. I don't know where that's going to go. It might go in the top of this tower. It might go in the top of that tower. I don't know. Jury's still out. So anyway, that is the rough idea of how the spawner room is going to go. The spawner floor is going to go. And uh, what we need to do now is just get in some of this dark clear glass. You might have remembered that we set up the uh, squid farm for this. And, and that's pretty much how it's going to go. And I'll take care of this between now and the next time we're here in the spawner room. Because we've also got these columns to take care of. And then uh, that area right there that block right there might be letting light in so i might need to put a conduit facade on there of some form but anyway that's going to be it for this episode hopefully you enjoyed if you did 
a like is always appreciated. If you didn't, let me know how I might improve. But uh, yeah, so if I'm doing something that, that you know, I don't know about, uh, well, it helps to know about it. So that's going to be it for now. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.